What is up, guys? It is the Sportster, Brad Walker, and welcome to the Walker Report, part of In the Zone Sports Talk Radio. Hopefully, everyone out there is having a lovely Thursday. We're once one day away, guys, from the weekend, one day away from Friday. Like I said, guys, hopefully everyone out there is enjoying their weekend. Um, just wanted to say, hopefully everyone out there is uh, getting vaccinated or thinking about getting vaccinated. Uh, I have, you know, finished my shots, um, so I am done and ready to go. But hopefully everyone out there staying safe. I know a lot of places around the country are starting to lessen their mask rules. So that is that. Uh, but guys, just real quick, uh, the Walker Report, if you wanted to get squat, uh, in the Zone Sports Talk Radio gear, head over to squadlocker.com, type in in the Zone Sports Talk Radio, and it will present the Zone Gear Store. That includes shirts, hats, jackets, and everything that you can think of uh, there for in the Zone Gear. Also, guys, the uh, Walker Report is sponsored by CreatingZenSpaces.com. It is the current choice for... Uh, it's the current choice in St. Petersburg, Florida for house cleaning, organization, decluttering, and pet sitting. It's about finding the peace within you and adding comfort to your life. And guys, remember, uh, Zen Spaces begins with you. Be kind to yourself and one another. And guys, if you miss any of this show, uh, it will be in its entirety on our YouTube channel, The Sports Center, Bradley Walker. Head over there. And guys, if you do like the video, like, share. And subscribe to the channel. That would be great for us moving forward. Well, let me go ahead, guys, and start to bring in my co-host. Here is one of them. Good evening, Lou. Good evening, Bradley. How are you this evening? All right. All right. All right, guys. So we'll go ahead. Um, so I've got some interesting uh, topics to touch tonight. Yes. Let's start with. This one right here, which I think everyone's going to flip when they see this logo behind me. Because be. I never in my right mind what thought that I would ever see this logo again. But guess mm -hmm. what, ladies and gentlemen? We are going to see this logo again because the USFL is coming back. Oh, Correct. God. You heard me correctly. L is going to relaunch in 2022. Next year, um, again, guys, if you do not know, the league has been – how long has it been, Lou, since they, they folded? It's been uh, – looks 3, like 1986. 1986 when they, when they folded operations due to financial struggles. Yeah. Uh, they played three seasons beginning in 1983. The league folded in 1986. Um, I so, yeah. So, yes, guys, the USFL – see, here's the thing. So – now you have the USFL and you have the XFL. How is that going to work? I I'm just curious. I, I yeah. want to know how is that going to work uh, moving forward? How is that going to work? I don't you know. know. We had the same problem back when we had the AFL and the NFL. I mean, they figured we had work that. So, yeah. Well, I think the only the, out of the two leagues between the USFL and the XFL, whoever has the. Uh, Corporate backing is going to survive. Yes. And if I not, think was, I think the USFL has more corporate backing. Okay. So then we will. Um, so let's see, guys. I mean, again, they did have some notable players. Both Hall of Fame quarterbacks, Steve Young and Jim Kelly, both played Kelly. in the league. Um, so both of them are in there. Let me pull up real quick. Uh, let me go back. I had the the uh, team names up here earlier. Let me. Well, the thing is, though, Browley, that uh, they don't know what they, they with the name with um, where they're going to held the cities and who the coaches and the players are going to be. But uh, right. they will ret they will retain the team names, even the generals. Okay, mm. <laughs> that was our, that was my team actually, the New Jersey Generals. Yeah, the these are the um, these are the teams, guys, that were as follows. You had the Arizona Outlaws, the Baltimore Stars, the Birmingham Stallions, the Chicago Blitz, Denver Gold, Houston Gamblers, Jacksonville Bulls, Los Angeles Express, Memphis Showboats, Michigan Panthers, as Lewis said, the New Jersey Generals, the Oakland Invaders, the Orlando Renegades, the Pittsburgh Maulers, Portland Breakers, San Antonio Gunslingers. 
Tampa Bay Bandits and the Washington Federals were the teams that were Federal used to be. Uh, again, as Lewis just said, we do not know what what cities will be hosting theirs. Adam, what you know, what cities will be hosting? Hello. Um, but the USFL is coming back, guys, in 2022. That was announced today that it is coming back. I, I oh dear. Can't imagine, uh, just like the XFL, how in the world it is going to survive, but they're going to give it the old he A summer shot. league, like they did in the spring. Yeah, Money. It, yeah, Money. It, lasted, it lasted three yeah. years. Well, we were just discussing whoever has the more financial backing is going to survive between the two leagues, the USFL and the XFL. So we'll see. That would be the that would be the NFL. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, oh, yeah. The the third option, the uh, option C, but yeah, um, actually, you can merge it. You call the US XFL. Yeah. yeah wow. uh, well, what about what about having all three of them merge and having the C US XFL? There you go. That's like a radio station. It's a Canadian radio station, I think, isn't it? There you go. Yeah, I oh. think so. Oh, and, and don't trust me that that's probably not what they're thinking right now. Like, yeah, let's combine no, all no. three. Don't trust any of us. <laughs> Hey, if they need if they need a if they need play by play guys, have them give me a call. Same here. I'll do, I'll do Tampa. I'll do Tampa for them. They're I'll do Jersey. Tampa. And I'll do where and I'll do just as long as I can get a, a video to video live stream. I'll do anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do Dallas. I'll do Dallas. <laughs> if you got if you didn't get that reference, ask your dad. Right. <laughs> Oh, and if boy. you did get that reference, don't ask your dad. Please don't. Uh, Oi. Well, I've, I've had a lousy day. Let's talk some sports. Sorry to hear about oh. that. But yeah. Let's, uh, uh, I just want to say I called it. I called it. I called it. You called what? Leafs. Uh, Leafs uh, you Canadians. All. You did. You did. I, I literally said, I sat here on this program three, not but three weeks ago, and I said, watch. The Leafs in five, but that means that they're going to blow a three to one, three one lead. So right. Canadians in seven. Enough said. Why don't we just talk about the National Hockey League? Well, yeah. Why don't we? I might as well. Well, speaking of that, uh, obviously the Montreal Canadiens did advance to round two, and they have beat the Winnipeg Jets. And what a cheap yeah. shot that was! Oh, that was well. disgusting. That was dirty. Pathetic. Was, it was. Yeah. It was Stupid. it was cheap. It was late and it was high. Yeah, yeah. Brutal. I mean, no. Okay. I, I when you have to, when you leave your skates, that's bad. When you have to leave your skates and to go airport. And the principal point of the con of contact was the head. Yeah, yeah. Did I haven't seen? Did he get any kind of a suspension? Or are they still talking about it? Still, I, still talking still about. It. I saw a Twitter poll or either yeah. Twitter poll or a Facebook poll. That I voted on that said he should be suspended for the rest of the series. I heard he should be from the bottom of the squad. So <laughs> I I'm I'm of two minds of that, you know. Because I understand I understand the league having to police it, but I also let the players deal with it and just let True. the game police itself. You know, back in the day you do that kind of shit and somebody will beat your ass. Yeah. Yes. You know, yep. you know, back thirty years ago, if um if uh, McSorley had a run Iserman like that, Probert would have been out there to beat his ass, you know. Exactly. And, and and I'm not saying, I'm not saying that I want that kind of you know those Donny Brooks uh, you know brawl for all type nonsense. But I mean, when you do mm -hmm. something like that, somebody got to clean you up. Yes. Well, but see, that's the thing. They've taken the enforcer out of the game. They don't. And, they don't like that anymore. And and, and 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 guys and the tough guys are all just goons like your Tom Wilsons. Yeah. Yep. That's a goon, all right. And it's just pathetic because you know the thing about it is he wasn't trying to stop the play. His stick was his stick was. I watched. I was watching a video and the 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 dude that was hosting the video he had pointed out that his stick wasn't he he, he didn't he didn't have his stick out in front of him. He right. wasn't trying to make a play. He stopped skating at the blue line and just coasted, and then as soon as he got a chance, hit him in the head. Yes. Yeah. You know, it, it's not like it's not like the um, Jonathan Taves incident, which was just a pure accident. 
one of those freak hockey plays that could happen to anybody at any time. Yes, yes. Uh, can you excuse me for just a second, gentlemen? Sure. No problem. I was going to say, right uh, if you want to, Lewis, here are the power rankings for all eight playoff teams from eight to one. All right. Uh, this is how the score has them listed down. Um, you have Montreal at eight. Mm -hmm. The Islanders at seven. Mm -hmm. the Bruins at six. Uh -huh. The Jets at five. The Knights at four. Uh -huh. The Hurricanes at three. The Lightning at two. And the number mm -hmm. one team is the Colorado Avalanche. Do you That's agree right. with, with that, with those power rankings? Well, I don't know about number three because uh, Carolina hasn't really been playing that well in this series. So I think they might okay. be a little misleading. Colorado, they had – Everybody has picked Colorado right from the beginning this year. They're going to win the cup, and it's showing right there. I mean, Vegas, well, Vegas is still, I think, uh, still legit. Um, holding at number four. Number two was number two was who again? Number two is the Lightning. Uh, they better get their act together. And number two is uh, is Tampa Bay, which, mm -hmm. see, I think right now you have, you know, the only two teams I think that can give the Lightning a, a – a, a run is the Avalanche and the Knights, yeah. and they're yeah. playing each other. It's just a shame that those two teams are going to – one's going to eliminate the other one. Yeah, it always happens. Yeah, that's what sucks. You got to realign, realign the whole playoff format. <laughs> well, here's the thing I want to know. Now, you have yeah. – right now you have three Western Conference teams and five that's Eastern Conference teams, so you're going to have to realign it somehow. Yeah. Because you have less Western, and you can't have two Eastern Conference teams in the Stanley Cup Finals. I don't think you can. Not since, they're, 15, not since uh, the 80s. Unless they're going to change the rule this year. <laughs> the, no, uh, I don't think so. Well, there was a lot of time, though, Bradley, before you were born, they actually did have that. Okay, okay. Because in 1980, the Flyers played the Islanders in the final. Okay, yeah, so they would both be, okay, yeah, that they would both be from the same conference then. Okay. Right, okay. that but that changed. Well, that changed in the late eighties, early nineties, and that went through the one through eight stuff and whatever. So this wasn't always the case. Yeah, yeah. God, I don't have to remember that. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> but then again, there was only sixteen teams still in the league. I mean, the league didn't really, um, you know, ex expand yet. They were just coming out of the WHA. Who, who, who won that series, Lewis? Was it uh, did Philadelphia win or did Islanders win that series? Islanders won it. In overtime in game six. Was that the first of four in a row that they won? That was the first of four in a row. Bobby okay. Nightstream with the winning goal. So the, so then then so then the last year that they won their last cup was eighty three, right? Was that the last mm -hmm. of the so that was the year I was born. That I was born in eighty three. So that was the last year that the Islanders won it. That's the last year the Islanders have even won a cup, right? I don't think they've made it to the back since then, have they not? Nope. Okay. Nope. Furthest that they got was the conference finals. Yeah. Yeah, they were in the conference finals last year against the Lightning and lost in the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah. Or you were going to beat Dallas in the finals. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it, it. I think the Knights obviously making the move. And I, I feel bad for Robin Lanier. Obviously, he had a bad game one at the yeah, high yeah. for seven goals. Um, they put Fleury in, and the Knights won game two. So it's going to be interesting down the stretch. Um I, if the Lightning win tonight, I think the series is all but over. That's just my opinion. I, I'm not saying that that's right. going to happen, but I think if the Lightning win tonight, I think you can put it put a curtain on it because uh, then that means that the Carolina would have to win all remaining four games left to come back. Um, and then, of course, I, I I really like the Islanders. I hope the Islanders take the Bruins out. Just my opinion on that. Um, hmm. That's just me. <laughs> That's well, just, for me, it's a, for me, it's a case of who I hate more. Hmm. Um. Well, who, well, being that I know you, you don't like Boston teams. Who I know you're a Ranger fan, so it's kind of hard when you're yeah. when you got both of those two th two factors playing into yeah. to it. But um. All right. So let's go ahead and also what happened earlier this week too. The NA NH into the day. Excuse me. NHL draft lottery came out, and of course the number one overall pick, which we all would have thought it was going to be Seattle. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? It is not the Seattle Kraken. It goes to the Buffalo Sabers. They get the first well, overall pick really. in the not, not really. at all in the draft this year. Um, 
Seattle is the number two team. They get the second pick. Right. Uh, and number three, I believe, who got the third overall pick? Let's see here. Give me this. Oh, give me the list here. Let's see. It will be the Anaheim Ducks. The yeah. Ducks got the third overall pick. The Ducks got the third overall pick in the uh, in the draft. Um, again, yes, guys, I am not surprised that the Buffalo Sabers no. uh, got the got the pick, got the first overall pick. Um, again, the interesting part, I really believe that the NHL needs to go to what the NHL and the NBA need to go to the whole NFL process and how they draft whoever the worst team is in the league needs to draft first, not, um, not have a draft lottery where last year in the draft, guys, if you did not know the Rangers made the playoffs and got the first overall pick. And took uh, Lafayette. Um, so that's what I'm saying, guys. It, it because of the lottery, it you know it ends up being that way. Um, so until the NHL and the uh, NBA changes their changes, um, it's going to just be that way. <laughs> yeah. And it looks like, guys, it looks like they're going to be taking. Uh, Owen Power, I think, is the defenseman that they have mm. predicted that the Buffalo Sabres will pick um, overall. Now, again, they still have to deal with Jack Eichel. Here's the order, guys, if you're wondering. Eichel. It's uh, Sabres, Kraken, Ducks, Devils, Blue Jackets, Red Wings, Sharks, Kings, Canucks, Senators, Blackhawks, Flames, Flyers, Stars, and Rangers are the top 15. Now, mm. The pick 16 to 31 were determined by the results of the Stanley Cup playoffs. The Arizona Coyotes have forfeited their first round pick. So uh -huh. he, Arizona will not have a first round pick. I want to say, I think that was something about some kind of controversy in, in Arizona that got them to have to forfeit their first pick. But well, they are, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm just okay. curious. But let me find out real quick, Lewis, and see why Arizona had to forfeit their pick. Yeah, I want to put the controversy. Yeah, let's see here. Let's see here. Arizona. Arizona Coyotes. All right, here we are. Arizona Coyotes sanctioned. So there must be something that has come up here. All right. So let's see here. Why they lost their first overall pick. They had to forfeit it. Okay, the National Hockey League has sanctioned the Arizona Coyotes for violating the NHL's combine testing policy during the 2019-20 season, directing to forfeiture of the club's second round pick in 2020 and the first overall pick in the 2021 NHL draft. Uh, the sanctions were announced by Commissioner Bettman. Um, so I guess what happened, guys, is they must have – I believe what happened, Lewis, is they were running a combine – during pandemic, when you are not allowed to do that, you're not to come in contact with players. That figures. And that would basically spell bad news for you. And that, I mean, I would think, I mean, knowing that you lost your pick, I, I would be pretty pissed if I lost my first overall pick oh, of course. For, doing, for doing stupid shit, because that's basically what that is. It's stupid, dumb shit that you did. And yeah, that's just, yeah, no. At you know, yeah, but again, you know what? if you do it, you got you know you you do the crime, you pay the time. So obviously they yeah. lost their second round pick last year and their first round pick this year. So, well, shame on you. Exactly, exactly. That is, yep. I mean, you got busted. Obviously, obviously they got busted. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I did. Yeah, so they they lost their pick because they ran a combine that they were not supposed to run. Um, it looks like uh, Michigan center Beniers is going to go to Seattle at number two. Oh, there we go. Shifley did get suspended, guys, for four games. Yeah, game suspension. Yeah, four game suspension. So big, big one. That's, yeah. Uh, right now, guys, it is one nothing Boston over the Islanders after one. Yep. And we have thirteen forty three left in period one. 
I mean, Carolina and Tampa Bay in there, it's a nothing, nothing there. Um, there's two games, guys, tomorrow. You have Montreal and Winnipeg at 730, and then you have the Knights and the Avalanche at 10 tomorrow night. And then over the weekend, uh, Carolina and Tampa Bay play at 4 o'clock on Saturday, and then the nightcap is Boston and the Islanders um, on that night. But so far, guys, there's really not – uh, you know, a lot to report on the National Hockey League. Other than now, we have the final eight teams left in the playoffs. Um, so that is, we'll, we'll, you know, keep you guys updated on scores and stuff like that. But right now, that's the hockey, excuse me, the hockey news that we have. Um, let's do this because I know this is, I know it has nothing to do with NCAA football. But I'm sure that everyone out there has heard that Coach K is retiring after this season. Yep. Uh, I will have to say um, that is going to be a huge loss yes. uh, to college basketball. <laughs> In general, Absolutely. that's going to be a huge loss to college basketball. Um, well, the factor is health that it's been the past few years. I right. think maybe he is the right time to step down. Well, he, I, I did see, I did read something today, Lewis, that he's doing it because of um, family reasons and stuff like that. So, I mean, okay. I mean, obviously, guys, he's 74 years old. He has won five national championships, 12 final four appearances, 15 ACC tournament titles, and 12 ACC regular season championships. Um, combined with the five years he was coach at Army. Uh, coach K has 1,170 victories as a college head coach, which guys stands as the most in NCAA history. So even more guys, than Dean Smith, wow. He um, he is absolutely built an empire at Duke. Seriously, that when you talk when college basketball comes around, everyone talks about is this going to be the year that Duke you know is back in the national championship because. That's what it's like when you start, when you play at Duke, when you play at Cameron, indoor. I'm sure now that they're going to be able to have sellout crowds there, they're going to, you know, every home game they're going to be wow. doing for him, you know, when it's all said and done. And that he he deserves it, guys. He he is a absolute the class of college basketball. One of the class yeah. coaches that are still left. Um, you still got uh, well, what's his name retired from North Carolina too, right? North Carolina head coach uh, hung it up this year too, I believe. Yes. Last year, yeah. So now both of the both of the uh, power, well, both of the power coaches in the ACC guys have both hung it up. Yes. Um, you still have Calipari in at Kentucky, but again, that's not the ACC guys; that's SEC. But I mean, the two. The two coaches uh, that have pretty much sweetened up the ACC over the past decade uh, have both stepped aside. Um, so it's going to be different, guys. This is the last year, obviously, for Coach K. I, like you said, it's it's and again. I, I know I have the NCAA football logo, and Coach K's got nothing to do with NCAA football. Um, but I have football stories, so that's why I put the football okay. logo behind me. Um, but I mean. You know, it, I, he will be missed. That is going to be a guy that's going to be missed. He coached Team USA as well, guys, during the Olympics. Yep. Uh, and you know what? I don't know how good Duke is. Can they make a run in another national championship in his last year? I don't know. No, no. no. They, they had a they had an awful season a year ago, so I don't know how it's going to get any better <laughs> for Duke this year. Um, but um, yeah, we'll see. Again, we'll be we'll, we'll all be watching. I know. We'll all be, you know, watching his last home game, his last road game. If they get to March Madness next year in March of 2022, I think we'll all be kind of paying attention to that. Yes. Like that. So that'll definitely be something that we'll have to look out for in the future. So here we go, guys. This is the opening lines for week one of, college football again guys of course we're months away we're, we're you know we're only in june we got a few months yet here uh, we actually are within a we are under 100 days uh left until college 
football starts. All the games start on Saturday, September 4th. So here we are now. We're not far away. Um, so here we are. <laughs> here are well, some wait, early lines. Wait, does that count week zero or no? I think that is week zero because okay. here is – here are some of the early lines. They have North Carolina as a six and a half point favorite at Vautech. So again, that is of course uh, Mac Brown, who again yes. has turned North Carolina around. Guys, not basketball. This is football we're talking about in North Carolina. Right. Um, Georgia is a three point underdog to Clemson in week week one. Uh, that'll be in Charlotte. Uh, so that is that. Penn State is a four-point underdog to Wisconsin on the road. Uh, Alabama is a 17-and-a-half-point favorite over Miami. Not shocking on that one. No. LSU is a two-point underdog at UCLA. Ooh, that's shocking. I mean, I know LSU had a pretty bad year last year. Okay. Um, Indiana is a three-and-a-half-point underdog to Iowa. That should be a good football game. Indiana's getting better at, at, at football. Iowa's a good team. Oh, yeah, they are. Uh, Notre Dame is a 10-point favorite over Florida State hmm. to start the season. Uh, Ole Miss is a 7.5-point favorite over Louisville, or Louisville, as people, some people pronounce it, that word. Uh, but those are just some of the early betting lines for some of the games. Louisville is not known for football. But. No, 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 you're right. You, that that is correct. Um, That's basketball and baseball. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. And here's another thing. Um, let me see. Why would it do that? Hang on a second. Let's see here. Why would that? I don't understand why that didn't come up. Okay. Never mind about that one. It was the um, kind of talking about the schedule coming up in college football. Obviously, again, guys, we're about two, three months away from college football starting up. Um, but like I said, we're, we're under 100 days, you know, and I think we're under 100 days for the NFL as well. So we're not right around the corner, guys, for football. Preseason only eight weeks away. Starting back up. Yeah. Yep. All right. So let's see here. Let's go to this topic, guys, which is tennis. And the only thing that was big about tennis yeah. is – and what is you guys – what is your opinion, Lewis, on uh, Osaka's, you know, leaving the French Open because of media blackout? She withdrew from the French Open following right. a media controversy. The media, the media has a big problem. You know, they yeah. butt into like you know like people's private lives. You know, I know that they're the public guy. That's they're a target. But you know, you have to want to back off of these people. I mean, you know, you wonder why there's a nervous breakdown, especially if they have a bad loss. And you know, right. if I had a business, like, I don't think I don't want to talk to anybody. Not even, not even, yeah, anybody I know. Like, you gotta want to back off of it. But you keep, you know, pounding them and pounding them, trying to get every little piece of information, even if it's not important, you squeeze it all out of them. And, you know, I don't know, I don't condemn, you know, condone about, you know, her leaving. I don't think that was right either. But at the same time, you know, with the media all over you, I mean, you know, you got to, you know, she's got to try to get away from that. I just, you know, she's such a great player. I'm sorry that I had to, you know, she had to drop out. Yeah. Well, her, yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree. I agree with you. I, I, and again, you know, we guys, yeah. we, we know the media has a job. We, we all know that they have a job. Yeah, well, like Lewis just like Lewis just said, guys, these these people that you're interviewing are humans. They have feelings. They they're not a robot. No, uh, you know they you know if they if they have a bad loss, I mean I, I I can think back to last year's Stanley Cup. Anton Udobin, the goaltender for the Dallas Stars, was interviewed after you know after they lost, and one of the guys qu questioned him and said, "Hey, are you coming back next year to be a Stars goaltender?" And he's like, guys, I just lost the Stanley just Cup. Lost, you idiot. Why are you asking me that question when I just got done losing? No, I don't have the answer to that and move on to the next question. But this is what media guys do, guys. There are media people out there 
that specifically like to chew on athletes. And obviously mm -hmm. one of them, Osaka, obviously somebody in the media got on her, under her skin. And guess what? She's like, you know what? Fine. That's how you're going to be treating me. I'm out of here. Yeah, I'm not going to put up with it. So, um, bye bye. It, it, it does suck because I, isn't she the number one player in women's tennis right now? Two. Number two. Okay. Two. Um, so, guys, I mean, think about that. The number two player in the world is not playing in the French Open. That's a disappointing thing. I mean, yeah. that's, that's, that's absolutely disappointing that we're not going to see her playing. And, again, we all, you know, the French Open, I think, I think it's, did it start? Is it starting or did it already last start? Week. Last week. It started last, last Sunday. Week. Okay. Um, we all know, obviously, that uh, Rafael Nadal is the guy <laughs> when it comes to men. Yeah. On the clay, he's the one who dominates. But you still got Federer, you still got Djokovic, so any of those guys can can you know win. I think Roger Federer's playing. He may not be. I don't know if he's he's playing or not. I know he's had he has had knee issues and back issues, so I'm not yeah. sure if he's in there or not. But yeah, Lewis is right. It, it it really is disappointing to have a media person end up costing you. Um, a, a, a great, a great player and a great opportunity to see somebody shine at, at a major. And yes. again, it, it, it would not matter if it wasn't a major either. You cannot pick on athletes and stuff like that. I don't care what sport it is. And again, just like Lewis said, unfortunately, there are media members out there who have to dig, and they dig because mm -hmm. they're looking for a headline. They're looking to get someone to pay attention to them, and that's what they do because that's what they get paid to do. Um, just you mean just snoop, right? And uh, guys, I, I, you know, I'm a media member for USF. I would never go to a press conference after, say the say the Bulls get absolutely abolished by the University of Florida, and I'm not going to go ask Coach Scott, "Hey, how was the game today?" He's going to give you these. The, how do you the, think the, we suck so yeah. when we lost? What yeah. Exactly. How do you think he's going to answer that no. question, guys? We didn't. He he's going to come out and say, "Well, that's a stupid question." Let's say it was. Um. Uh, let me go through here. Um, trying to go through all the coaches that have that are great. Bill Belichick. Let's say it's Bill Belichick. Bill 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 We're moving on. On to the next week. He's not going to answer your question. No. I mean, you know, it's let's and it is. Let's put this way. Don't make me angry. You won't like me when I'm angry. <laughs> exactly. So I don't. I don't understand. I don't understand why immediate why the media had to do what they did, and you know what? If that's yeah. what, again, she's getting support guys from other athletes and other sports for her leaving the French Open. So this is not something that she's all by herself. She's got Russell Westbrook and a bunch of them supporting her. You know, from what for what she did, because again, I'm sure they're tired of it too. I'm sure they're just as tired of it as she is with the media. You know, I've seen I've seen YouTube videos one after the other of athletes blowing up at media members. So it happens. It happens. Also, so, unfortunately, it just happened to be at a at a at a at a major in tennis. <laughs> That's the only thing that sucks. Yeah, yeah. Is you know it's a major in tennis, and you know, but okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I had a call to take. I apologize okay. for that. Right. Um, what was what did what did they ask her? Because I've never, I haven't, I haven't. Do we know what was said that made her that got her so upset? I think she was asked to talk about the start of the tournament, and she yeah. didn't want to speak because I think she was having a bad day or something and didn't want to speak to the media. And uh, they 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 took it as an insult for her not speaking to them. So I guess she said, you know what? The hell with it. I'm going to withdraw, and I'm not going to deal with the media people. So the funny thing is, no matter where she goes now, you know at Wimbledon or whatever the next tennis major is, they're going to ask for that Wimbledon, question. Wimbledon. It is Wimbledon. Okay. They're going to ask yeah. for that question. They're going to bring up that question again. You know that's what they're going to yeah. do. Somebody will. Somebody will. You know, somebody's going to bring it up. You know, so that's what happened with, with that. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, real quick, guys, I have one horse racing thing. Bob Baffert has been um, suspended for two years.
from Churchill Downs. So he's been banned from the Kentucky Derby for the next two years after his horse failed a um, post-race drug test. So he has been banned from Churchill Downs for two years at the Kentucky Derby. So you will not see him. I don't. I don't know if he if he can still train horses for the Kentucky Derby. No, I don't think he can. Oh, he can. Okay. All I don't right. Think so. Let me nope. see. Yeah. Hang on. Yeah. Let me see something here real quick and see if see what exactly. Let's see what this says here. This is from NBC News. Um, Why not the cover? See, Mr. I recorded it. See, Church suspended reckless trainer Bob Baffert for two years. Officials said Wednesday following drug test, the ban will last until throughout the spring of 2023 mm -hmm. at Louisville Track. Uh, Baffert trained media sprint, won the uh, media spirit, won the run up for the roses on May 1st, but then since all right, so yeah, so he has been banned. Um, yeah, I don't think he. He can even he can't enter a horse. He can't train a horse. No, oh, yeah, I think he's the not he can't lead a horse to water. Like, oh, yeah. oh. Sorry, I don't even think he can lead a horse to water at this point. I said that. <laughs> he can't make a drink either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's straight from the horse's mouth, folks. Oh. Yes, there you go. Oh. Well, here's two here's two sports that we don't really talk about, but we should talk about. We'll start with NCAA softball. Now we have the Women's College World Series set. Uh, so let's open it up and see what the – I think there's eight teams that are – I think the eight teams got to the World Series. Let's see here. I always seem yes. to get more softball. You have um, – actually, I think the games – I think we're today. Um James Madison yeah. faced off with Oklahoma, Georgia versus Oklahoma State, Arizona versus Alabama, and Florida State versus UCLA. Those were all the four, um, the eight teams that were in the four college. Games. He got four, four games. games. Four games, eight teams that were in the college world, softball world series. Let's see. Um Oh, by the way, but if Kinky you didn't hear, uh, Sheffield did get suspended for four games. That's what I said. Four games. Right. Yep. Sorry. Yeah. He got suspended. I didn't exactly. I didn't exactly announce my uh, my exit. <laughs> he deserved, he deserved I changed. I changed. I changed lines without signal in there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. My sorry. My that's what my girl called, and uh, so I answered the phone, and then uh, right before she was asking me if the guy survived, it's like, yeah, he had a concussion. Yeah, but he did survive. Well, she was, was like, because we were we were watching the game together last night, and she's like, I don't know how he survived that because he looked dead. Like, Hockey players are made of some tough stuff, so. Yeah. Um, it looks like guys, uh, JMU stunned number one Oklahoma. Oh, wow, they, really? Homer in the eighth inning. Um, yeah, let me see. I'm trying to get. Why can't I get scores here? Hang on a minute. Let me pull this up on ESPN.com. I've had these problems too. Okay, here we are with softball, guys. So as of right now, James Madison, James Madison beat Oklahoma four to three. Uh, Madison had four runs on three hits. Oklahoma had three runs on six hits, two errors. Oklahoma State beat Georgia three to two. Uh, the uh, Cowboys had. Three runs on five hits, three errors. The Bulldogs had two runs, seven hits, and zero errors. Uh, the Arizona is facing Alabama. Alabama is up 2 nothing in the top of the sixth. And Florida State UCLA is in an hour from now, first pitch. So those are the four. But I, I know I was watching uh, ESPN the other day, and they were showing college softball. I'm like, well, we had to cover that on the show because that is going on. And uh, so, yeah. Uh, again, the guys, there's, there are two of the, two of the games have gone final. I don't know if it's a one and done thing or if it's a series. I don't know uh, the first lose two is out. First lose is two. It's out. Okay. All yeah, right. I think that's how he is. Okay. Okay. So again, now mm -hmm. that means James Madison has a one-zero lead on Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State has a one-zero lead on Georgia. 
so far. Too. So Oklahoma. So tomorrow, James Madison plays Oklahoma. And Ariz- and the winners of Arizona and Florida State play each other. Okay. And so Oklahoma plays Georgia Saturday. Georgia. Okay. So then, the- and then the losers of games three and four play each other. The game six losers. So that'd be the game. That'd be the. Okay. So game game one was Madison and Oklahoma. Game two was Oklahoma State and Georgia. Game three, which is going on right now, is Arizona, Alabama. And game four is Florida State, UCLA, which is later on tonight. James Madison will play Oklahoma State in game five. Then game six, which will be the winners of three and four, play tomorrow night. And then game seven is Oklahoma and Georgia already. That one's been because they were the, they, they were the losers of the first two games. So then the losers of game four, so the games that are going on tonight, they play each other. Okay. And then the loser of game six plays the winner of game seven. And the loser of game uh, the game, game ten is loser of five and winner of eight. And then it gets really convoluted. So does James Madison play Oklahoma State tomorrow? Uh, yes. Okay, so the two winners play and the two losers play. So that means Georgia plays Oklahoma. Okay, gotcha. Uh, the two winners play. So that's that's Oklahoma State and yeah. okay. they play each other, and then the winners of tonight's games play each other, and then yeah. Game Seven, Game Seven, which is fr- Saturday afternoon, is the losers of the first two games. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yep. Very very. Uh, Problematic. Trying to remember all those different scenarios. Yeah, yeah. The other one, guys, obviously would be college baseball, and that's the road, uh, the road to Omaha. I think they play the College World Series in Omaha, Nebraska. So let's look at college baseball. Let's see here. Still nothing, nothing with 255 left in the first period. Yeah, I'm watching uh, the other one. Carolina's on, got eight shots on goal. Lightning has seven. That was a first. big crunch. Good yeah. clean hit and open ice. So here we are, guys, with the College World Series mm-hmm. uh, that starts tomorrow. You have number one Arkansas versus. Um, and I don't know who this is. N J I T. I'm not really sure. Oh, who that hey, is. come on, easy. No, 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 I don't know who that is, Lewis. Who I is do. that? I do. New Jersey and Sioux Technology. Technology. Nope. New Jersey and Sioux Technology. Oh, okay. Hmm. All right. All right. Well, they're playing tomorrow I against see. the Razorbacks. Okay. And then you have Northwestern versus Nebraska. And then Saturday, the winner of Game One versus again, same thing with the softball. Winner of game one versus the winner of game two. Loser of game one versus the loser of game two. And then down the road, you have – that's the Fayville Regional. The Ruston Regional is uh, Louisville Tech versus Ryder. I, I don't know who Ryder is. That's a university I've never New York, heard of. New York. It's New York. Okay. Alabama will play NC State. Okay, the same scenario with that one. Uh, the Stanford Regional is Stanford versus North Dakota State. Nevada versus UC Irvine. And again, same scenario with the winner and loser of that one. The Lubbock Regional is Texas Tech versus Army. Wow, Army's baseball team is good. Yeah. Cool. Did not know that. Um, North Carolina takes on UCLA. The Tucson Regional is Arizona versus Grand Canyon. Um, UC Santa Barbara versus Oklahoma State. The Oxford Regional is Ole Miss versus uh, SE Missouri State and Florida State versus Southern Miss. The Greenville Regional is Eastern Carolina versus Norfolk State and Maryland versus Charlotte. Mm-hmm. The Nashville Regional is Vanderbilt versus Presbyterian and Indiana State versus Georgia Tech. The Austin Regional is uh, Texas versus Southern and Fairfield versus Arizona State. Another one, New Jersey school. The Gainesville Regional is Florida versus South Florida. How about them apples? That's tomorrow. Um, South Alabama versus Miami. Um, 
Uh, then you have the South Regional, that's Notre Dame versus Central Michigan. Fire up Michigan chips. Versus UConn is game two. Go uh, blue. Go blue. It looks like, buddy, too, speaking of go blue, it looks like the Kraken are going to take the defenseman from the University of Michigan uh, as their first pick. Um, Medical sea monster. Mississippi State versus Sanford and Campbell versus ECU in the Starkville Regional. Fort Worth Regional is TCU versus McNeese. And Dallas Baptist versus Oregon State. There's a lot of regionals. Columbia Regional is Old Dominion versus Jacksonville. And Virginia versus South Carolina. And, guys, that's not the Jacksonville Jaguars, in case anyone out there is wondering. It's not the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, they might try, they, although they probably have a better chance winning some baseball games, college baseball no, games at least. Uh, the Eugene Regional is Oregon versus Central Connecticut State and LSU versus Gonzaga. The Knoxville Regional would be Tennessee versus Wright State and Liberty versus Duke. And then that's it, guys. That's all the regionals. And then, again, the Super Regionals are Friday, June 11th to Monday, June 14th. And the College World Series starts on June 19th and ends on June 30th. Just like the uh, just like the softball one, guys, it is the winner of games one and two. Game, those, the winners play each other. The losers play each other. So on and so forth on down the line until – the teams are eliminated until it gets down to just two teams like it will be with softball as it will be in baseball as yep. well. So that is how um, that goes there. Uh, where do you guys want to go next? Do you want to go Oxygen, USC, Major League Baseball, NBA? We can talk about yeah. golf if you want to because I'm the only one that's going to be talking about that. If you guys want to talk about that, we can do that. Maybe NBA. NBA? NBA? Yeah. All right. We can do the NBA. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Yes, we are in. Yeah, and I uh, feel bad for you, Lou. I thought that the Knicks would have put up a little bit more fight. Yeah, I thought the Knicks were going to win that series. Trey Young was a monster. Yes. Mm. I agree. Yeah, he was. The Nets are still in, though. So That they are. Are you a bigger fan of the Knicks or the Nets? I'm a bigger fan of the Knicks, but at least I still have the Nets, so at least I got something going. Something to fall back on, right? Yes. I just want to see the Suns close it out tonight. Oh, yeah. They will. Portland and Denver are playing right now. I don't know. I think, I think LeBron goes. Yeah, the Denver's. Uh, tr Portland's leading early. Just, Portland just started second. Game seven. And now game seven will be in Denver, right? Should be, yeah. Yeah, near yeah. the three seed. Okay. Yeah. Now, do you guys think that Phoenix closes the series out tonight? I hope so, yes. but I don't think so. Yes. I think LeBron has himself a monster game. He goes off for forty-five. With Keeps up. Uh, uh -uh. And the, the other game tomorrow is Dallas and the Clippers, and every road team has won every game in that series. So, is that, that, where is that game? Is that game in LA? Dallas. In Dallas, so that means oh, the okay. Clippers will win. The so far, they have. So, you want to call Mark Cuban? Yeah, mm. exactly. Exactly. I don't know what you want to call him, but uh, I, I, I would call him for a raise. I could, I could, uh, he's got an opening. I, I could use yeah. a raise. The Islanders are on a power play. So it's still one nothing there, Boston. No, nothing in, 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 uh, on the island at the Nassau Coliseum. Oh, yeah, that's right. This is game three already. I forgot. I'm still even thinking about that. Yeah. Well, Boston uh, won game one, and then the Islanders won game two in overtime, right? Yep. Right. The Islanders are trying to even it up. That one apiece. They're on the power play. Oh, oh yeah. People in front of two rats right now. As a the uh, uh, lightning and uh, hurricanes guys are tied at zero after period one. Uh, NBC. I, I'm watching USA, so NBC has now flipped it over to the Islander game. During the – that's kind of cool. I kind of like that. Now I get to watch both games without having to change the channel. Yeah. 
Oh, come on. Get the shot in there. Yeah, come yeah. On. Dummy. So as a Rangers fan, do you root for the Islanders or? You know, I'm always trying to think who I hate more here. I'm kind of torn because. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what is it? Well, look, I mean, Eric was an Islanders fan, so, you know, I have that. But I have a friend in Boston who was a Bruins fan. So uh, I'm kind of torn between that. I hear you. Um, so will you root for the Mets or are you Yankees only? Yankees only. So if the Mets went 0 and 6 0 and 162, it wouldn't hurt your feelings. If they went 0 and 162, I start a parade. <laughs> Fair enough, my friend. Fair enough. Hey, <coughs> the best of the losers, or worst, does it work? It's yes. the little, it's the little brother in New York that keeps pestering you. It won't go away. That's right. All right. Little so brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. The it looks like somebody wrote that A Rod's partnership to buy the Timberwolves was allegedly violates an agreement. Did you guys hear about that? Um, no. Okay, hang on a second. Let me bring this article up here real quick. That was a good deal. Was a good deal a few weeks ago. I yeah. Uh, I probably had this article up last week. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I my my work schedule last week. I was up every right. day early. I was just dog tired Thursday night and Friday night for that matter. I yeah. was on. I did. I, I did. I did. You know. I did wake up Saturday morning. <laughs> yeah. You sure? Yes, you did. Yeah. I I was. I up can Saturday. vouch. I can vouch for that. I woke up Saturday yeah. morning. <laughs> I can't vouch for you because you weren't on the show. No, I was still up. <laughs> we're still sleeping. He was still sleeping. <laughs> uh, yeah. oh, man, I got to make it. I got to my Saturday schedule. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. So let's see here. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. The ownership saga for the Minnesota Timberwolves and Minnesota Lynx took another turn. According to ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski, Meyer Oak has filed a complaint with the U.S. District Court in Minneapolis about the sale of the Timberwolves from Glenn Taylor to a group led by Mark Lohr and Alex Rodriguez. Orbeck is alleging the pending sale violates the franchise's partnership agreement. Most notably, the complaint said the deal doesn't include any provision that requires Laura Rodriguez to keep the Timberwolves in Minnesota, per Wojanowski. Wow. Okay, so... There's a chance that they're going to move Minnesota out of the Timberwolves out of Minnesota. Where are they going to take them? Seattle. Yep. Yeah. That's what I saw earlier. Is that they want to move them back to, or they want to move them to Seattle? Mm -hmm. I don't know and why. Supersonics again. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna say I don't understand why. I mean, when they moved them, the 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 Supersonics weren't selling. That's why they moved them out of out of Seattle. Yeah. yeah. What 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 happens in five years when the seat when the when the news worn off and they're not shiny and, and flashy and they're thirty four and forty seven and nobody's coming to their games mm -hmm. yeah. like they were because you're not you it's not like you're you're not moving a, a good franchise you're moving a bad franchise well, and, and what the ones to move not the good ones right I, I you know what I mean. But you're not you're not moving uh, you're not moving a team that like moving the Sonics the Sonics were able to establish themselves very quickly in Oklahoma and get some really they got Durant well Durant was you know one of the last players that, I think he was the last player drafted by the Sonics yes. and um mm -hmm. you know and then they were able to bring Harden and Westbrook in and they you know in 2012 they went to play they went to the finals to play LeBron and. You know, it, it, it's easy. You know, it's easy to get, especially in a new market, a place that you've never been before. But you know, going back, going back to Seattle, you've got all those Seattle fans who grew up with Sean Kemp and those guys, and they're loyal to those guys. And if you bring the Timberwolves, stink, and they're one of the worst teams in basketball, and you're not, you're not going to get a. And there's, there's no Durant's in the in the draft right now. There's no player that can absolutely just single handedly take over a basketball game that you can no. pick right now. Mm -hmm. 
So, so moving the Timberwolves just doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, if you want to put a set franchise in Seattle, that's great. I don't have a problem with that. But why not? If you're going to put a, a, a franchise in Seattle, put a one in Vegas, and then Vegas has all has everything but baseball. Well, that could be the new home of that could be the new home of the uh, Oakland A's. And there, there's there's talk that they can move there. Uh, and I, I I can see Oakland moving there or the uh the Marlins or the, the or the Rays. Yeah. 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 Uh real quick guys too. Uh Adam Silver wants to continue to have the playing tournament to become an annual fixture oh. in the league. Um what are you guys' feelings about that? Uh, not once we get back to an 82 game regular season. Once we have a full 82 game regular season, nah, that's just extra. That's just that's just homework at that point. Yeah, just play the 82 games and then let's go home. You know, it, 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 you know, you really, really, you think that and and did none of the lower seeded teams moved up? All the higher seeds moved on, except for Memphis. The only was well, the was then. Well, I mean. I mean, they were, they lost um, against, they were a nine seed. They beat the Spurs. They were the nine seed. They beat the Spurs and beat the Warriors. But, I mean, you had four, you had four teams. Of the four teams, only one moved up one spot. I mean, it's really kind of silly. Uh, I, I can I, I I understand I understand it with this year and it being the the, the a shortened season. Yeah. It was kind of interesting, mm-hmm. but honestly, when we get back to eighty two games and you have you have a thirty eight and forty one team playing a a forty one and forty one team for the eighth and final spot, you're just no. no. And don't give me a show with that mid season tournament stuff. That that'd be ridiculous. Mm. <laughs> no, <It's> stupid. <laughs> No, I, 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 I agree with you guys. I, I, I think once we get back to the regular, and I think both the NHL and the NBA will both return to their regular season. The regularly scheduled broadcast. Year, you know, because um, obviously football got back to theirs. Obviously we were, you know, and they're still in the kind of the early stages of the MLB season. I think we're about midway through now. That yeah, Labor, we're about 50. Or, I mean, Memorial Day is here, so we got Labor Day. Memorial Day. Day is here, so we're past fifty. Now we're at about uh, about sixty. So around Fourth of July is when we get the halfway. Yeah, halfway yeah. The, yeah. the All Star break. I don't know if they're going to have an All Star break or not, but they the All Star break is generally the halfway point. Oh yeah, that's right. It's going to be in Colorado. I couldn't remember. I forgot. Yeah, they moved it out of uh, Atlanta. Atlanta, yeah. Yeah. Because of the, the politics. Uh, yep. Politics. And that's just we're gonna yeah, we'll just leave it at that. Right. Yep, because of politics. That is exactly yeah. the correct answer. Yeah. All right. And I don't I don't agree. Let me let me just go on the record and say I don't agree with that. Me you know, you're not you be you know, I'm not a I'm not a Braves fan, but the fans in Atlanta didn't deserve they had they don't have any control over what the uh what the legislature does, and the legislature doesn't give one flying, you know what about baseball? Correct. You know, so you're not you're not punishing the Atlanta. You're not, you know, every city outside of Atlanta is like whatever. We weren't going to see any revenue from that anyway. So, yep, exactly. And we're gonna we're just gonna do what we're gonna do. And Colorado's like, okay, thanks. <laughs> oh, what a save! What a save! Wide open, point blank, and he got over and got it. Uh, you're, watching, you're watching the other game, I assume, not the New York, not the Islanders. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm watching the Islanders game. Yeah, yeah, it was a good save. Because the Lightning, game, Lightning games in the middle of an intermission. Yeah, light, light, yeah, Lightning games at the intermission. Um, are they getting Boston for that one? Here are here, guys. Here's the ten most depressed oh. fan bases in MLB so far this season. So um, is Detroit number one or is Minnesota number one? I'll get to that. Uh, number 10 is the Diamondbacks. Uh, number nine is the Phillies. And number I thought they were going to be good. They started out hot, and I thought they were going to be good. Uh, now, this one, I'm kind of wondering why they made this list. Number eight is the A's. 
the A's are in the middle of being in the division. Could it, could it be because they may be losing their franchise? Yes. Possibly. possibly yeah. Uh, seven is the Royals. That's no yeah. But they got barbecues, so it'll be all right. Baltimore, Baltimore right. is number six. They've got they've got uh what is it? Loser. The crabs. The Baltimore crab famous for crab cakes, yeah. They are, yeah. Uh, they are, they are in a shitload of trouble right now. The twins are five. Yeah. Um the Angels are four. It's too low, man. I thought the twins were gonna give. Uh, the Tigers are three. Uh. Uh, number two. Three? That's it? Yeah. Who do you think number That's two? It. Anybody want to take a big guess at who number two is? Atlanta. It's not the Atlanta Braves. Nope. Not the Braves, huh? Not the Braves. The Rockies. The Rockies, yeah. The Rockies are number one. I had them at one. I had them at one. <laughs> so there's, gotta, there's another so team. Number there. two. Number two. Uh, yeah, I'll give you Miami. Guys, I'll give Miami? you Miami. They are in the National League. That'll that eliminates any. Not, not the Marlins. Not sure. the Marlins. Not, not the Marlins. It's not Miami. Nope. It's not the Miami Marlins. Brewers? You said it's not the Brew Crew. Nope. Not Is it the, the Cubs? Crew. Not the Cubs. I'm just gonna keep guessing until you tell me I'm right. Yeah. Um, right. You already said Arizona. Arizona. Right? They're on there already. Cards? No, no they're Cardinals. not on there. Cardinals, yeah. the Cardinals, Cardinals are win. Cardinals are leading the National League uh, they're, Central. They're, 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 they're leading the NL Central right now. The Cubs are Cincinnati? right there. Cincinnati? Not it's Cincinnati. It's not the Red Stockings, huh? It's not the Red Stockings. Not Red Sox. Not Boston. Nope. No, that was their original name. It's the Red Sox. Not the Cubs. It's not the Cubs. No. Giants. It's not the Giants. Giants are actually. Winning baseball games this year. How about that? Okay, we gotta, uh, think, we gotta think of teams that suck. Okay. And that are in the National League that suck that haven't been said teams yet. Teams that suck that are in the National League. Um so you guess the Cardinals, the Reds, and the Cubs. You're kind of in the ranked division with okay. that. It's not and it's not the Brewers, so then who's the fifth team in that division? Not the Brew Crew. Who's One the more. other team? Who's the other team? That division, Cubs, yep. Cards, Brewers, yep. Reds. And who's the other one? That's a good question. Yeah. Oh, you put me on the spot. I hate when that happens. <laughs> As I always draw a blank. I always draw a blank. Yeah. I can get you know. I always get four out of five, but I can't come up with that fifth one. Fifth one. Um. Who do the Who do the Pirates? There you go. Oh, yeah. I forget about the Pirates because I think they're in the East. Yep. The Pittsburgh Pirates are the uh, – <laughs> I, I have. I always think that they're in the NL East, not the Central. Central. They're, Central. Oh, they're Central. They're Central. Which is weird because they're, they're in Pittsburgh, and I think of Pittsburgh as an East Coast well, city. Nobody said this would, nobody said this would be with geographical context. So, uh, right. I'm sure – Y'all find your geography. Let's see. I'm sure we'll Pittsburgh over here in the west. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll put we'll put Colorado here in the east. Yeah, east of what? Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. In 1924, when the Pirates joined the league, it all made sense. Yeah. But yeah. the Giants would go here in the north. Okay, okay. north of what? <laughs> we'll put Detroit. In the, we'll put Detroit in the west. West of what? Detroit. West of what? Yeah. Yeah. Next week, Chicago, you idiot. Yeah, uh, I never, I never liked Detroit being school. in the West. It always irritated me, especially you know when we have to go play like Arizona or um, well, and we or the Central teams like Chicago or yeah. um, we'll put Florida next to Chicago here. <laughs> uh, I was hated. I was hated late, late. Weekday late games uh, in the NHL, like on a, on a Wednesday night, yeah. playing in Chicago or St. Louis. Yeah. So those games wouldn't start till eight o'clock. Right. You know, it was. You know, it, it's. You know, when those games start at ten thirty, like okay, I'll just watch it tomorrow. But the games that start at eight o'clock, I I'd start. Wa I watch the first period and a half. Let's yeah. go to bed. Mm -hmm. Maybe show to Hawaii. We won't have any problems there. Right. 
it'd be like two o'clock in the afternoon and start a game. Yeah. Uh, I, I I used to watch uh, the Pac-10 after dark because uh, I worked I worked afternoons. So on Saturday, you know, I'd get up, I'd get a, you know, I worked, you know, I'd go to work at one o'clock in the afternoon. So, you know, Friday night, I'd come home and watch a couple, you know, watch the late game on Friday night. And then Saturday, I'd go to bed at like one o'clock in the morning. So I'd get up at yeah. noon and I'd be, I'm chosen for some football. Mm-hmm. You know, I've watched football all day straight out. You know, I, I used to watch a lot of that, a lot of pack, the Pac-10 after dark. Yeah. Although last year they had Pac-10 before breakfast, so those were kind of yeah. fun. Ten o'clock, ten o'clock, nine yeah, o'clock think, in the morning football games. That was good. Yeah. I was all right with that. Sounds like my Saturday night because I don't get done until about one o'clock. When I'm done, when I'm done with because well, Saturday's a big night for me, and then I post all the uh, late scores or anything. By the time I'm done, it's one o'clock in the morning. My was like, will you get some sleep already? <laughs> <laughs> I just can't. I, I, I still I still do it. Not, <laughs> much to my, you're good before, before you go to bed, the sun will be up. <laughs> much to my much to my sleep schedule chagrin. I still stay up on Saturday nights till like one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I tell it's business, people. I, I have I have eight o'clock or one thirty. Nothing sports in between. Never, sports never sleeps. Come on now. Right? Sports never sleeps. Neither do I. Yeah, but I have to. <laughs> uh uh, here, guys, here are the power rankings as we enter, obviously, okay. the month of June. Um, yeah. This is via BleacherReport.com. So, again, yeah. don't, don't take these as my rankings. Yeah, Bleacher are, Report. Sometimes their articles are good, but their listicles are pretty terrible. They yeah. are. Baltimore, yeah. Baltimore at 30, Arizona at 29, uh, the Rockies at 28, the Pirates at 27, the Nationals at mm-hmm. 26. Uh, they have Texas at 25, Minnesota at 24, the Angels at 23, the Reds at 22, the Phillies at 21. Uh, then they have the Tigers at 20. The Braves at 20 team. All right, then. At 19. The I drink Mar- to that. The Marlins at 18, the Royals at 17, the Mariners at 16. So here are the top 15. Um, it's Houston at 15, Cleveland at 14, the Yankees at 13, Toronto at 12, Oakland at 11. And then here are the top 10. They have the Mets at 10, the Brewers at 9, Cubs at 8, the Dodgers at 7, Cardinals at 6. Um, and here are the top five. They have the Red Sox at 5, the Giants at 4, the Padres at 3, the White Sox at 2, which means who is number one? And the power rankings for BleachReport.com, the Tampa Bay Rays. Mm-hmm. So that's who they have at number one in the power rankings. Um, it's all flies in a baseball game. Hmm. I was gonna say, I was about, I was yeah. about to make a snap, uh, make a quip about the. Uh, you can go ahead and talk about the attendance. That's fine. I was gonna. I was out there. Need, I mean, I'll be talking about that tomorrow night. But all the Rays fans yeah. need to hear that. You know. Uh, I was gonna make a. I was gonna say the. Uh, the rest of the league is as uh, allowing more fans into the into the park, and the Rays are and the Rays fans have decided to uh, implement their own uh, quarantine. Yes. <laughs> and today's attendance nine. <laughs> yeah. No, it's up, two, it's up two from yesterday. Uh, yeah, but yeah. that doesn't that doesn't count because we had to pay six of them to get here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The um, guys don't count. And that would have been I, if I if I had more time to prepare that joke, it would have been funnier because I was I was trying to come up with the uh, the rest of the league has ended the lockdowns. The Rays fans just don't show up. Correct. As as or the rest Mar- of the or as the rest of the, uh, or Mar- as both uh, as the rest of the league begins to allow more and more fans in, the Rays are, still have a cap of twenty five hundred. No, yeah. no, there's no, there's no more lockdowns. That's just as many as they could get in. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you want to go? Yeah. And that's you know all stemming from um, ownership treating the fans like shit because that's basically what it boils down to. Uh, South you Florida. That, when you produce shit, that's what you're gonna get. Yeah. True. Hey. Well, I mean the Rays. I mean the Rays have won ninety plus games the last three seasons, and they can't fill. Yeah. They got to the World Series last year. They were two victories away from winning the World Series. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. But uh, – We saw El Zippo. Yeah. Real quick, guys, I, I, I saw this pop up. Um, it looks like the Giants 
will become the first major league team to play in a pride uniform. Uh, yeah. Their caps and their logo mm -hmm. will have the progress pride flag on it. Pretty cool. I mean, I think that's a pretty cool thing. I mean, it's uh, anyone out there celebrating in his pride month. Um, so everyone out there that celebrates that congratulations, you know, on that um, the celebration and stuff like that. But the Giants will be the first team to um, wear those jerseys, which again, being in San Francisco, I'm not surprised that they are the first team to wear those. So right. saying that uh, not to be offensive to anybody in San Francisco, that's just, you know, so again, that's, that's that. Um, I guess guys, if you want, we can go to boxing. I know there's the, yeah. okay. the Paul, the Paul Mayweather fights this weekend, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, it's this weekend coming up. Where's you get for that? With two words for the results. Whoop <laughs> no. ass. Mayweather's going to kill me. I hope, I, hope um, yes. I hope he does. <laughs> you know. well, what more is Mayweather want? He's got everything. It's it's not it's not going to be nothing. Nah. Yeah, it is. It's uh, Saturday at six. Or yeah, by all means, it's probably because it's going to go more than three rounds. It's gonna it's gonna go the distance. Nobody. It's gonna really? be it. it uh, it's an exhibition fight. They'll both yeah. be. They, I think they. I haven't I haven't heard whether or not the whether they'll be wearing headgear or not. But it's gonna be. It's gonna be no. It's gonna be exactly like the the Jones Tyson fight. And it, you know, it's a, it's a spar. It's a glorified. That's a goal. Glorified yep. um, sparring match. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Neither side's gonna throw a punch harder than sixty percent. Each side, you know, Mayweather will score some points. Paul will score some that's points. That's legit goal. That's legit. Both teams will both both guys will they'll trade some punches, and uh, and uh, I I imagine that it's not going to be much of a it'll it'll just be a, a sparring match. You you come out you throw a punch, then he throws a couple punches, and you throw a punch, and then he throws a couple punches, and you, and, and it's basically a, a dance recital at that point. I don't know why they're doing this. It's silly. Who wants to leave? <laughs> Well, I mean, if you want to talk, I mean, about, other than money, we're talking about serious boxing. Um, Triple G and Rayo Maruda have agreed to a fight. Have they agreed to a fight in oh. Tokyo? That's a that's a title fight too. Yeah. Is it? Uh, yep. It's I, to I, a title fight. Yep. I heard some. In August. I heard some rumblings that De La Hoya may come back and uh, have a go with Triple G. Ooh, I, mean, I, I, think we, I think we all want to see uh, Triple G and um, what's his name? Um, darn it. Who did he face before that he mm. he wanted a decision? Canelo? Canelo, thank you. Canelo, that Canelo three? Before, yeah. Because they, they fought each other three. They fought each other twice already? Yeah. yeah two fights already? Okay. Yep. All right. So, yeah, that uh, Triple G did agree to a fight in December in the middleweight division. Um, the I'm other looking for – I can't wait for Pacquiao. Yeah, that was Spence Jr. Too. The Pac-Man. Um, there's another kind of not really – bot. well, it is boxing news because I think it's the uh, top boxing announcer. Um, Jim Lampley did sign with Thriller or Triller. They'll call the Lopez Cabalas fight on June nineteenth. Uh, he has been the primary mm -hmm. caller on HBO. HBO. Um, he hasn't called boxing on HBO since he got his sport at the end of two thousand eighteen. Mm -hmm. So he has signed to do the fight in Miami. Um, that's pretty cool. So did 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 he retire? Did Jim Lampy retire from boxing? Yeah, he did. He did retire? Okay. Yeah, he's what, what, 110 now? Yeah, he well, obviously he's gonna come back for one fight. So obviously he's because he's been he's been the face and voice of HBO boxing for years. So was Lori Murphy. Mm. Yeah, him too, both of them. My you favorite can even throw was, in uh, was, uh Joe Tessitore. Uh, yeah. 
You could even uh, who's the who's the co-host on First Take with Stephen A. Smith? Oh, um, Which Max one? Kellerman. Max, Max, Max Kellerman. He's yeah. another guy that's been on HBO for a long time as far as Max, boxing. Is. Yeah, he he you know he has that show Max on Boxing. Yes. Yep. I don't like him so. I like him. <laughs> I've never liked Max Kellerman. I thought I was Max Kellerman. You're right. You're, no, way. I'm Stephen A. Smith. He's Max Kellerman. I'm Stephen A. Smith. And you're Molly. <laughs> I'm the mediator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Um, so, UFC guys, really quick. I think we, we discussed this. Uh, Chuck Liddell has not interested in fighting Jake Paul, but I think some UFC fighter did agree to fight. Jake Paul in the future in the in the octagon. Yeah, I'm not, not mistaken. Yeah. Well, actually, Jake Paul's going to get into the boxing ring in August. Yeah. So um, that, he's going to fight with him. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yep. Jake Paul to fight former UFC welterweight champion Tyron Woodley. Tyron. Yeah. yeah. There you go. See, that's why. Uh, yep. That's what I thought I read in today. a boxing match. Watch match, okay. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if those always, you know, like a fair fights. You got UFC team against boxing and, and whatnot. I don't know if that makes it a fair fight. I mean, I know it makes it entertaining, but you got to like, I mean, does it really make any any logical sense? Right. You know, that's what I'm trying to figure out. I mean, you know, you got one boxing because, you know, while this is a boxing, you're UFC, which is trying to be the next thing in boxing, but it really isn't. So you basically don't have any experience. So you're going to get your ass kicked at making a fool out of yourself. It's something you don't even have any experience in. So I, I don't even know if it's really even worth it. No. How much boxing is done. Well, again, again, it's, I think it all comes down, basing it down to money. That's what it comes down to. It's, I have nothing against UFC, but I don't think, you know, it, it works when you're trying to come out with boxing, you know, it's, you know, one with yeah. the other. And the, the, I don't, I don't like UFC guys going in and trying to box. They, no. they usually don't win. Like I said, not a fair fight. I wonder what they're going to fight at because Woodley usually weighs in at, he's old too. I don't know why these old guys want to fight such a young kid. I mean, Jake Paul's only 20 years. Oh, he's cocky. Yeah, I I don't I don't get it. He's thirty nine years. He'll be thirty. He'll be forty next year. I'm fifty one. So, but you have no interest in fighting Jake Paul. I mean, well, I mean, boxing. I'm offer, I might do it. Well, for the right amount of money, I'll I'll box anybody. Yeah. But. Of course, I have to be dirty though. Right. <laughs> Queensberry of Queens rules. Yeah. Because. Yeah. Uh, uh, I personally would take below the family jewels. Right. Right. Hey, look over there. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Oh. I think I think UFC, you know, they're they're good where they're at. I mean, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Damn it. Wow. Boy. Is it two nothing now? Yep, sure is. Aho. Aho got hey, it. It went to commercial, so I'd gone back to the other game and I hadn't gone back. And I forgot. Oh, yeah. oh, got a breakaway. All right. Okay. So let me go ahead, guys. What I'm going to talk about the PGA. Um, real, 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 real fast before we get into PGA. Go ahead. So, uh, yeah. Paul fights at cruiserweight, which is between 190 and 200 pounds. Right. And, um, uh, da, 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 let me go back. Woodley is a middleweight at 170. He just can't give up 20 pounds, man. I don't get it. It no matter how big and strong you are at 170, you're not bigger and stronger than so, you know, fighting at welterweight. You're not yeah. going to be bigger and stronger than a guy that fights at cruiserweight. And yeah. and again, we've talked about this before. No. Going up, it does. It, it favors going up in weight favors the guy. That um, is that weight. So even if he was to go up to one eighty five or one eighty seven, now he's now he's not in shape. So uh, it's just mm-hmm. silly. 
Okay, golf. New York golf thing. Four. So, guys, uh, a couple weeks ago, we did see history on the PJ Tour with Mickelson yeah. winning at the did age you, of 50. Um, did you see that video? Did I send you that video? I meant to. Uh, the little kid. Oh, yeah. Thing. Oh, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. And he's like, yeah, so, the, so this this kid in the crowd, I don't, I don't know what precipitated it. I don't, I don't know if he was saying something to Mickelson or, or not. But Mickelson walks over to him, and he's, he's lining up his shot, and he's like, what do you think? He said, he goes, if I could hit my three with 260 yards, I'd take a chance. Mickelson thought about it for a second, grabbed his three wood, hit it, and he looked at the kid and went, you can you can caddy for me anytime you want. And he got a he got a signed ball and, and everything after that. I got to take pictures and everything with him. I'll send I'll find a video and send it to you after after we're done here. Uh, well, that's that, guys. I mean, Phil Mickelson is that way. He's oh person. yeah, he's he's always uh, been that way. And again, he he did guys did set PGA Tour history. He's the oldest player to win a major. Uh, the oldest before him, I think, wasn't Jack what? Nicholas. I forget who it was before him. That no, I think it was Jack. Tom Morris. Somebody was one of the older players back in the day, back in the early 1900s. Yeah, sprayed up boy on the power play. Um, the um, yeah, guys, I'm gonna admit this. I when, when it was uh, it was Nicholas. When it was okay. When Tiger won in 2019 at the Masters, um, I cried, dude. I, seriously, yeah, I'm yeah. Admit right now, I had tears in my oh, eyes. Yeah. Oh yeah, I had tears in my eyes when Phil won too, for two reasons. One, it's Awesome to see an older guy win with all these young guns on the tour, just like right. everything else. Mm-hmm. But number two, guys, that was my mom's favorite golfer. Uh, we, you know, she oh. pulled for him in every golf tournament he played in. And I was, mm-hmm. trust me, I was at my friend's house. She actually fell asleep on the couch. She didn't even see me cry. I don't care if she did anyway. But right. it was I, – I, I had tears in my eyes again, you know, thinking of her because I know she was – Smiling from ear to ear in heaven, going, "Oh, he won one!" Yeah, and to, and to win a major on top of that. Yeah. Now, the question yeah. is, can he win at the U.S. Open? That's the yeah. only thing he has won in his career. That's the next major. It's coming up. Um, that's in a few weeks, right? That's correct. the one that's at the seventeenth through the twentieth, right? right? Yeah. Now, there's another. There's another charity tournament that he's playing in. Uh, yeah. Phil's playing in. Uh, it's Phil and Tom Brady versus uh, Aaron Frank Rodgers, Shambo um, and Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. yeah. So, and um, if you ask Bruce Kepka about Bryson DeChambeau, he'd have some few choice words. Uh, I'll be writing an article about. He's those. a character. Um, Bryson is not well liked by Bruce Kepka. If you want to get yeah. go with 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 that, um, he he's a bit of a character, from what I understand. Um, if you guys didn't see the interview, uh, Brooks was having an interview, and uh, DeChambeau walked by with his spikes on the cart path. And guys, metal spikes are not used only by the PGA pros because amateur golfers cannot wear metal spikes anymore because mm. people can't walk <laughs> properly, mm. so we can't wear metal spikes anymore. Mm. And they make a lot of noise. They're very noisy. It's just the sound of metal grinding against clunk, concrete. Clunk, 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 clunk. Um, but he said he I goes. Can- as, as DeChambeau passed by, and again, I'm going to quote this, and I don't care. I, I'm not going to get in trouble for saying this word, but he goes, really? That fucker has to pass by right now? Really? Yeah, yeah swear, pretty much. Swear to God, that's what he said right on an ESPN interview, and the guy the guy ESPN had to laugh. He's like, did he just say what I thought he just said? Yep. Yeah. You did hear exactly what he just said. Now, he was very unhappy, guys. Brooks Gepka was very unhappy. With the crowd at 18 at uh, Kelowna Island in South Carolina, um, the uh, crowd was not controlled very well there on the final hole. You guys watched the tournament. Uh, they flooded the fairway. Phil and him had to go through the crowd to get to the to get to the green. Um, mm. They didn't have it really well. They didn't, I don't Rope know if they broke off. off or they just didn't. Didn't have enough to secure it. I don't know um, offhand, but uh, yeah, he was not very happy. But I give congratulations to Phil on um, breaking a record. Obviously, yeah, yeah, that's that was uh, awesome. 
Um, oh, I thought that was in. Here are some future golf courses that will host the PGA Championship. I sure wish it would be hosted here at Innisbrook and Palm Harbor. That would be great, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Um, no, probably not. Let's see here. The 2022 PJ Championship is at Southern Hills in Tulsa. It's been held there a lot. Oak Hill Country mm. Club in 2023 is in Rochester, New York. Uh, Valhalla is in Louisville. That is a nice golf course in Louisville. Um, Quail Hollow in Charlotte, North Carolina in 2025. Um, Amernick Golf Club in Newton Square, Pennsylvania. I've never heard of that golf course before. Um, PGA Frisco in Frisco, Texas in 2027. And in 2028, the Olympic Club in San Francisco, California. The 2029 PGA is at Baltus Hall in Springfield, New Jersey. The 2031 PGA Championship is at Congressional Country Club in Maryland. And the PGA Championship is back at Frisco in 2034. So there's some future sites for the PGA. But again, guys, that is the only I mean, big news on the PGA Tour, obviously. And we are a couple weeks I, away from the U.S. Open starting. I, I think saw nobody... Nobody finished their round earlier today. I saw that. Yeah, it was canceled due all, to uh, Memorial. It was canceled due to weather. All yeah. 60 players didn't even finish the round. Wow. Okay, let's see here. When is the 2020 U.S. Open? Let's see here. 2021, maybe? Yeah, I'm sorry, 2021. Um, Yeah, so June 17th. So we're a week away. Not Two. next week, but the week <laughs> after that. And it will be at Torrey Pines. Um, and they, just wondering, if you guys are wondering, the purse there is twelve point five million. Just want to get that out there. And of course, that will be spread amongst everyone that makes the cuts. <laughs> okay. So even the guy that finishes last place gets a, gets a cut of that money. So just anyone out there that doesn't watch PGA golf, if you what make if I, the cut, you are guaranteed a paycheck. Guaranteed. What if I, so that is that. So you're guaranteed a paycheck if you make the weekend. Sweet. I we like to just the game. Mm. <laughs> All right. So we always end the show with the NFL. Uh, real quick, uh, Joe Burrow is about 85% with his knee coming back from his injury rehab. Um which is good for Cincinnati. Obviously, that division is going to be Yeah, it's good for the NFL, too. Yes. Um, they're going to need to protect him. I think they drafted offensive line. Did they not? Did no, they, they went with the receiver. Receiver, okay. They went with Jamar Chase out of LSU. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, that's, that's right, probably. because he was Joe Burrow's teammate. That's right. Yep. And I like that. What a teammate. Chemistry. Instant, instant chemistry, yeah. man. Because who – it was uh, who Tua got somebody uh, – Waddle, right? Yep. Took yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 So, and the yeah. Eagles took Smith. Um. So, guys, who do you think Julio Jones is going to end up with? That's one of the top NFL stories right now. I don't know. They're wanting a lot for him. Yes. An aging receiver. Uh, they want. They want a big payday for him. They want him. They want to get their money's worth. That's for damn sure. Yeah, I I don't know where he could end up. I've I think it'd be interesting if he went to Tennessee, give Ryan Tannehill a bona fide number one to throw the ball to. Okay. Should be interesting. I've seen him linked to uh to um New York or New England. Yeah. Um. That's why uh, I'm hearing a lot of the uh, hot seems to be going to the Patriots right now. I don't see that happening. I don't know where either. Um, I mean, he could stay. I've heard. You know. I've also heard Seattle. Yeah. I heard that him and Russell Wilson have been talking. Yes. Um, I would love to see him go to Buffalo. Or or uh, Baltimore. If we can go to Baltimore. And give um, Lamar Jackson a genuine number one yeah. to throw the ball to. Let's see if he can actually, if he's all that in a bag of chips or if he's just mm -hmm. a run first quarterback. 
And what are you uh, – that would be fun. I mean, I, mean, I think every, all the Bucks fans here in Tampa want him out of the division, so I don't think they care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not the division anymore. Right. As long it's, as he doesn't go to New Orleans, to be all right with it. Um, he does seem to have very good games against the Bucks. He's had many, many great games against the Bucks with his yeah. uh, his Falcon and with with Atlanta uh, since he got mm. drafted by the Falcons. Uh, killer man. What is your take on Tim Tebow with the Jaguars? Bad move. Bad move. See Good. what he can do. Come on, seven years out of the league. Uh, one year. Yeah. League minimum contract. One year, a couple million. Actually, uh, let's, see if he make, let's see if he, he makes it through a, camp. He signed a one-year $850,000 contract. Mm, good got. move. But he's probably going to get some kind of, you know, incentive. There's bonuses and all that. Yeah, sponsorship. Let's see if he makes it out of camp before we – let's yeah. see if he even makes the roster before we go right. and we'll go from there. Yeah. Um, guys, there have been – the NFL has cleared – all 30 teams are cleared for full stadiums. That's pretty mm. cool. Okay. That's interesting because I know there are Please. some cities that are still kind of – Yeah. Mask rule and stuff. And, guys, we're not picking any, anybody's state. If that's the way your state is, yep. everyone's being safe. That's great. That's outstanding. Yeah. That's fine. Well, it's going to be uh, – sticking. I'm wondering if they do open them up, if they'll have people like a vaccinated area and they'll have a non-vaccinated area. I'm wondering that's if that's the thing to do, do probably. I, I don't know because there are going to be people out there that aren't going to get shots because they don't want to or they're allergic to the shot or whatever it is. They have the underlying medical conditions that prevent right. them from getting. Correct. And that's, that's yeah. fine. You know, if that's one of the things out there that you yeah. guys have. That's you know a okay. I, I mean, yeah. Tuesday. Are you okay, Lucy? Okay, all right. Me, mine. Okay, I know me and me Said. and Adam both have had our two shots. So yep, I'm, I'm fully. Not. I've been fully vaccinated for a little over two weeks now. Yeah, I mean, I, I might feel like death by next by Wednesday, but we'll see. Yeah, you yeah. probably. Two are you getting? Are you? Uh, are you? Are you getting Pfizer or Moderna? That we don't know yet. That we gotta just see what we're gonna get. If you can get get Pfizer, I got the Pfizer and it was, I day uh, first round I had arm my arm was sore for about eighteen hours, and then the second one I got sleepy and I took a nap. So, so to sleep it off. Yeah, that's basically all I did was sleep it he, off. He had a he had a lot less than I did. I had Moderna, so he had yeah. And then my buddy, then yeah. he had Moderna, and he got miserably sick with the second shot. Right. And my buddy got miserably sick with the second shot. And I never forgot that's why it works because they might grow a third eye or a third nipple or. Right. You know, well, I wanted a third arm, but I didn't get my third arm. Damn it! <laughs> I only have two. I wanted three. Yeah, I mean that's gotta hurt though. We get a third nipple. Oh, ooh. <laughs> I already have three, so didn't need a fourth. One and a third arm. Or you try you always turn into a half man, half beast type like a uh, creature. Uh, it's really scary. It's really scary. Oh, it's it's, it's, it's it's incredibly sketchy. Yeah. Nah, it's all good. No. Honestly, oh. it's look, the what? So the vaccine. If you look at the numbers, the any. I've seen the, the most exaggerated report that I've seen of people having severe reactions up in, including death was 10,000 and they've distributed over a billion and a half of, of the shot, at least the first step. And, um, if you run the numbers, that's zero, it's point zero 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 six percent compared to the, I may have added Kraken. No, the mythical uh, sea creature might turn into a Kraken. You <laughs> might. Unfortunately, I didn't. No, I didn't either. I didn't so, either. Um, compared to the two percent of people who contracted COVID and died, yeah, I think I'll take my chances with the vaccine. Yeah. Well, I, I have heard too that, like I said, I may have said this on Saturday. The people that have had COVID and get vaccinated are good. Yeah. For because that's they, what, that's what you were saying. Friends. Yeah, they're they're good for life. So, right. if I mean, again, I'm not saying that it's it was right to get the virus. Um, again, there have been people that have died, and you know, God rest their yeah. soul, that a loved one die from it. 
but the people that have survived it now get vaccinated. Now you're good for life. Now you're oh, oh. We're not we're not saying go out and get COVID and then get no. vaccinated. But no, if you no. have had COVID and you get vaccinated, you are protected for life. Yep, you are protected for life. That is correct. That is correct. Um, guys, there's going to be a salary cap ceiling in the National Football League increase. I heard. Uh, to two hundred and eight point two million. Um. The cap will be will drop to 182.5 million in 2021 as a result of COVID-19 in the 2020 season. So it's expected to go back up during the 2022 season. Obviously, if you're going to have full stadiums, your revenue will go back up than it was yeah. last year when you only had very few or no fans at all in your in your stadiums. Yeah. So. The, uh, biggest, the biggest crowd was the Super Bowl at 15,000 people when they usually have 90. Yeah. yeah. I don't I don't I, I don't know how many actually get inside right in the game stadium. I know it's there's I don't think it's even I think it may be 50,000 or 55 I think is max. And that's the is For the 70? Super Bowl you, you have to be expandable to 70,000 minimum. Okay. I rem, I when when I did the tour of Ford Field right bef- right after they got the Super Bowl uh, or right before, yeah, it was it was before they got the Super Bowl. They were saying that they could expand to ninety thousand plus. Uh, that was at Ford Field. That's cool. Yeah. Or eighty five. I don't remember how many it was, but it was a lot. It was a lot more than the sixty five or sixty thousand that they normally have for a yeah. given weekend. If they actually have sixty five thousand, you know, not necessarily, but. Well, that, that, see, that's the that's what's weird about if we were, we're going back to talk about the Rays, yeah. the Bucks draw fans, even when they're even when they're not mm-hmm. good, and the Lightning draw fans, even when they're not good. The right. Fans, the season ticket holder during the years after they won their first Stanley Cup, and it right. was there was hardly anyone there, but there were still fans in the stands. The Rays, and we're not, you know, the Rays winning, and they don't they can't get anyone to come. <laughs> and we're not, you know, we're talking. Twelve or fifteen thousand a night. We're not talking eight, eight, seven or eight. Right. The Rays have been winning, and they're they're lucky if they have seven or eight people. Yeah. Hang on a second. Let me let me look up something real quick, guys. Let's see. Wow. Let's see what the last attendance was for a Rays home game. Yeah. Hang on, just a second. Let me go look this up real quick. Um, the Rays did win today, nine to two, to even to put the series with the Yankees. Um, let's see here. Let's see when the last home game for them. The last home game. Does that? Okay, the last home game was against the Phillies. On Sunday, and the attendance for the game was. Let's see here. Let's see if it's open at MLB.com. It should tell me what the attendance number was usually. Usually will tell me. Stories. It's not gonna tell me. You gotta be joking with me. I know there's a way of looking up how many people attended the game. Really? All right. So let's see here. Yeah, no, against the Phillies. So far, if I'm understanding this right, they're averaging just under six. Just under six? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I know I know it's not that many. I know they I think they just increased allowing people and see here's the problem, guys. Where the stadium is located in St. Pete, the yeah. mayor is very, very strict on the whole match. Yes. Colorn, thank you. Okay. Batter up at two, huh? They, um, he's very, very strict on the mask policy. He was one of those mayors that wanted you to wear a mask outside when you were walking. Mm. He was one of those guys. 
So he makes it very difficult. He's also probably going to be the reason why Tampa Bay and St. Pete, along with their ownership, loses the Rays out of the out of either they're going to go to Charlotte or Vegas or somewhere where they can where they can draw fans enough to make it profitable. Um. Anyway, that's my rant about the Rays attendance. Um, I guess the biggest thing now, guys, obviously, is Aaron Rodgers. That's the big talk in the National Football League right now. Um, is he going to play for the Packers? Is he not going to play for the Packers? Is he going go to go? Is he going to retire? Because that's I've heard that for two uh, that he's retire. So I don't. I don't. Um, I. I. I I would probably say 85% chance he doesn't play for Green Bay this year. Just me saying that, going on a limb and saying that. I, I could be wrong, but I don't see that happening. So I don't know. I don't know who would pay for him though. That's yeah, there's the there's the there's the big question right there. Who's gonna give up all of their draft picks or whatever to yeah. bring him in? A, a, a team you have to have a, a good enough team that needs a quarterback. But if you if you have a, a good team that needs a quarterback, it's not going to trade away their pieces to get a quarterback. And a bad right. team, a bad team without a quarterback doesn't have anybody to trade for a quarterback. Nope. Right, right. Look, let's say let's say Arizona. Um, and Kyle Murray. You go either way on him. He could either he could either be a really good one. Or he could be five years and done. Mm-hmm. What if you're if you're Arizona? You know you have DeAndre Hopkins and a couple other pieces. But if you trade away Hopkins, then you lose the reason why you're wanting to bring Aaron Rodgers in in the first place. Correct. Yeah. Correct. If you trade well, away I, Pitt, I think what happened. But on that case, is they'll trade Kyle Murray to Green Bay. So straight Murray will go to Green Bay and trade up. Straight up quarterback tree for for Aaron because, Rodgers. I mean, let's look at this scenario. I and I know this is not going to happen. Neither one of these situations are going to happen. But okay. how about a straight up quarterback trade with Seattle? You trade Russell Wilson for Aaron Rodgers, and they both go their own separate ways to new right. teams because both that of them want out in their respective teams. Right. Or what was the other one that they were talking about? Straight up quarterback trade. Um, that he was quarterback day. with disappointment. Disappointed in, uh, I'm trying to think of who else it would be that you would trade. Um, not this not is, Buffalo, not San Francisco, because because they just drafted. Yeah, they just drafted Trey Lance anyway, um, and Garoppolo's damaged goods as far as I'm concerned. Right at this point, he's going to have to come. The he's other going to have to play his play his way back in. They might, they might trade straight up, straight up quarterback. The quarterback that was upset, Seattle was one because of Russell Wilson. There was another quarterback that was upset with where he was at, and they wanted they wanted to get, get him. And I don't remember who it was. I know it was Russell Wilson in Seattle. They were talking about that. Right, and it's right. Not gonna be, it's not going to be any of the NFC or AFC North teams because they're not trading Joe no. Burrow. Okay? They're not going to trade Brady, uh, not Brady Quinn, Jesus, wow, a Baker Mayfield away. Oh, you're not going to trade. That would be tempting, though. Baker Straight Mayfield. up for for Aaron Rodgers. Ooh, yeah. I would be so tempted to pull the trigger on that one, though. How about Lamar Jackson if he goes to mm. Baltimore? Ooh, that would be. Interesting. They're not going to. They're not. They're not trading him to Pittsburgh because again, Roethlisberger's damaged goods too. Yeah. So that's so not. This is. Happen. This is one that I saw. This was a this was a a proposal. Okay. Aaron Aaron Rodgers to Pittsburgh. Okay. Uh, via uh, via Atlanta. Okay. Uh, Green Bay. Uh, see, uh, the Steelers get Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Green Bay gets Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, Eric Ebron, Terrell Edmonds, and the twenty third first round pick from Pittsburgh. Jordan uh, Atlanta gets Jordan Love, Chase Claypool, the 2022 Pittsburgh number one, Green Bay second in 2023, and uh, two 20, uh, 20, 2022 and 2023 second from Pittsburgh. 
That the only thing about that that leaves Ben Roethlisberger in the lurch. What do you do with Roethlisberger? Yeah. And it's not exactly like it's not exactly like Aaron Rodgers is thirty and he could sit on the bench for a year. Right. Well, Aaron Rodgers is going to be thirty-eight. So, ah, the second tied it two headed to headed to the intermission. Um, what do you do with with what do you do? With what Ben you, Roethlisberger, uh, yeah. who is also an aging veteran, who doesn't command, you know, who had a who had a down season, especially at the end of last year, and in the playoffs, yeah. you're not exactly going to be able to leverage Roethlisberger for anything. No. Yeah, no. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to be able to send him somewhere. Again, it goes back to what I was saying about a team that needs it. A team that has pieces that need a quarter needs a quarterback isn't giving up those pieces for a quarterback. And a team that needs a quarterback and has no pieces doesn't have anything to give up for a quarterback. Right. So the, that's the only problem I have with that deal. Other than that, it looks really good on paper, at least. Yeah, I, that, and that I mean that that's a lot of pieces going to a lot of. Teams. Teams. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of moving parts in that deal, but I can't, I can't imagine seeing Matt Ryan in a, in a Green Bay factory. Mm. That would be interesting. <laughs> that would be yeah. interesting to see Matt Ryan in a Green Bay factory uniform. Another former, another former Falcon wearing the uh, wearing green the green, and gold. Green gold, yep. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to see now. Now that baffles me because they were talking about that on Dan Patrick. A while back, about mm. the quarterback, the, the the straight up deal for quarterbacks. And now I'm gonna now it's gonna bother me until I figure out who the hell it was that they were referring to. I know it's not anyone in the NFC South because they're not gonna trade Brady, so no. that's not gonna happen. Um, Darnold's not not going anywhere. Darnold's not gonna go, yeah, Darnold's not gonna go. Darnold doesn't command enough. And then the Saints don't have the cap space to, to sign Rogers, so that's out of the picture. Who are they going to trade? Winston? No, that ain't happening. Right. They're not going to trade. Um, what's his name? They're back. Tyson Hill. The Swiss Army uh, Knight. So that leaves. Oh, maybe, maybe it was. Maybe. Oh, that's who it was. I'm sorry. Was it Jack? It was Houston to trade Deshaun Watson straight to Green Bay for. Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers. They would trade teams. But then how are you going to do that now? Because he's in he's in legal trouble. So that that's not going to work. He's yeah. Because I mean the uh, the Colts aren't going to trade quarterbacks. Because I think they just yeah got, they did they made a deal to get Wentz from um, Philadelphia. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think the Eagles are going to make a deal because they have Hurts. That's who they want. They were right. So that's not going to go there. Buffalo. The, Giants, the Giants aren't training Daniel Jones, so that's not going to go. Although I want, if somebody, if the Packers came with an offer for, I would at least consider it, depending on what they wanted. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm sorry, but I'll take an aging Aaron Rodgers over a prime Daniel Jones at this point right now. Okay. Um. How about how about a trade with the Cowboys? Jack straight, no straight up for for Rogers would be attempting. If I was Dak. Green Bay, I would be very interested. Yeah, Dak to Dak, Dak to, to Green Bay and Rogers. Would, oh, Jerry Jones would love that. The love only it. problem is, is that I could imagine that Aaron Rodgers would say no to that deal because McCarthy's the coach and oh yeah, and, they along with each other. Yeah, yeah, they they didn't get along, especially there. It was a marriage made in. Someplace yeah. unpleasant. <laughs> yeah. Not quite hell, but but fairly unpleasant. Unpleasant. Tijuana. Like purgatory. Yeah. Like I said, Tijuana. Yeah, Tijuana. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't Cleveland, I forget. No, no, I, no. <laughs> East Cleveland. Hey, at least we're not Detroit. Oh. Uh, you got a uh, you got a new quarterback in Detroit this year, right? Yep. Um, Jared Golf. Does. Jared Golf. I'm interested to see what Matt uh, Dan Campbell can do with. Uh, can he? Uh, you know that'll be that'll be a real test of Dan Campbell's coaching ability. Mm-hmm. You know we know exactly who Jared Golf is. A little bit better than average. Going to throw more touchdowns than interceptions. 
can want to win a couple more games than he loses. Um, doesn't make the bad mistakes very often. You know, he doesn't, he's not going to throw up, you know, he's going to be one for, he's going to have two touchdowns and a pick, but he's not, he's not going to piss the game away, but he's also not the kind of guy that's going to throw the team on his back and say, let's go get this some bitch. Right. Yeah. Well, I don't want to say that. Well, I, I was going to say, are you, are you entitled blood because of Stafford being with the Lions for so long and see how he does? With LA, yeah, I'm excited to see. Yeah, I'm excited to see what Sean McVay can do with Matt Stafford. Let's see. Let's see, and this will be a test of Sean McVay's coaching ability. He's got himself a good quarterback now, a real bona fide winner, who's a guy that's just needed to get outside the shadow of the line. Let's Matthew Stafford could throw forty or fifty touchdowns this year. Oh, I, we just we discussed that, buddy, on your show last Saturday. How yeah. a lot of people yeah, have yeah. losing to the Rams. That was yeah, that we did talk about that on the schedule that a lot of people had them penciled to lose to. I think they played the Rams in week three on the road it's in like, LA. It's, so. it's early on in the season, but yeah, yeah, they were talking about that. So I don't, right. you know, uh, I'm not disagreeing with that. And you know what? The Bucks, you know, could end up, you know, doing that. They could lose, they yeah. could win. you know, I will have to wait and see what, what, what right. Where, Band. We're a long way from preseason at this yeah. point, so well, we're under one so. hundred days uh, till the start of college football. Under one hundred right. days start of NFL, so that's good. Hell I mean, yeah! I love starting football. to turn the page to the summertime where it's getting warm here. I know it's in the nineties every it's, day here. It's now. warm here now, so it's hot. It's gonna get warm here. What's the temperature yeah. like in New Jersey, Liz? Today, not today, about in the mid 70s, but it's going to go up within the next 24 hours. And I mean, yeah. up. Well, I you, can't imagine what it's like in New York City when it's 90. I was going to say. It's got to be on Brer. It's got to be in oh, yeah. brutal. It's hell. I can imagine, like in the city itself, like on on Fifth Avenue, where it's nothing but you're surrounded on all four sides with concrete. Yeah. It's got to be hot as fuck. I can't. I just can't imagine. I know. I know it's it's hot. You don't want to. It's hot in Detroit. It's hot in Detroit, and and they're not nearly as bad as New York City. Like it could, it, you know, where I'm from originally, it could be ninety, and it's it's hot, but it's not, you know, it's not too bad. But it's like it could be it could be eighty two in the metro area, mm -hmm. and it's just sweltering. Which you know, well, one thing I have you we. Both got you beat this humidity down here. Yeah. An egg yeah. On the sidewalk. Yeah, 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 I heard. <laughs> you can fry an egg on a sidewalk down here during the summertime. Well, at least it's a dry heat. <laughs> Not down it's here. Funny, yeah. you know Not down here, it ain't. You no wonder why my brother's coming to New Jersey for a few weeks. It could be it could be 90 degrees and it feel like temperature's 110 because of the humidity. Right. So that's what I'm saying. I mean, that's hey, hey, hey. how bad it could be. It could be 75. And overcast in the feel like is ninety eight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, it's the same kind of same kind of shit you got in South Alabama. It'd be so damn hot, and then about three o'clock it just pours for about fifteen minutes. Yep. It absolutely dumps. Yep. You set your watch to it. This is that time of the year. Of course, you know here in Florida, just hurricane a few season. days ago the hurricane season started. So now yep. we're in right. June first, right? June first. Yeah, yeah. that's correct. So now we have to look on our calendars until November 30th. When <laughs> right, when it ends. Hopefully it won't be bad this year. After everything uh, we've been in. They're predicting a pretty uh, heavy season, but I think they only – I saw that they only listed down um, two to three major hurricanes. So that's category three or above. So not too bad. It's going to be an active season, but not too many big storms. Right. Correct. Yeah, last year. Yeah, we got we, we got to the, the Greek alphabet last year with all the hurricanes we had a year ago. Yeah, but none people. of them, <laughs> none of them were really major storms that I remember. I don't remember any major storms making landfall like three or four years ago. No, no, we haven't had anything like Katrina yeah. or anything. Ah, they tied it up. Matthew Barzell, tie game. Nice little sneaking wrap around. 
I uh, I have the Islander Bruins game on right now. Oh, boy, boy. Yeah, me too. I've been going back wow, and forth. Wow, look at that. The Islanders only have 19 shots on goal through three periods. Wow. You got to make them count. Boston's, yeah. playing, good stuff, Boston's yeah. playing good defense. I, I'm i pulling for the Islanders because I can't yeah, stand too. Boston Bruins. So sorry for all the I Bruins like fans out there. I but I, like I, I, I'm more of a – I'd rather see the Islanders move on. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think this is the series that whoever wins this plays the winner of the Carolina Tampa series. Yep, yeah, that's it. That's your conference finals. Well, here's the question I have, and maybe you can answer this, but right now there are five Eastern Conference teams and three are there's what eight teams left, right? There's five from the east and three from mm-hmm. the west. So how does that work if Montreal beats Winnipeg? Because Montreal's an Eastern Conference, Montreal not an Western Conference team, right? So how does I that think work? they would take. I think they would. How does that work? Because, because they would play. They would play the winner of Colorado Vegas. Correct, and let's say Montreal won the, that conference. Then, you're going to have two teams from the Eastern Conference going to right, Tampa, no matter what. Yeah, no matter if it's. Tampa Bay, Carolina, New, the Islanders, or the Bruins, they're all Eastern Conference teams. Yeah. You have it five will be in all East Coast, 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 all East Conference, yeah. Eastern Conference finals. Unless they're hoping Winnipeg wins. Right. It wouldn't be an issue because then Winnipeg would play either Colorado or LA or LA. Vegas. Or Vegas. Yes. Around in the Unless, the, or they're hoping that Colorado or Vegas moves on. Well, you're going to have one of them move on one, of the, one way or the other because they're playing each other. So. What is that series tied at one, right? I, the Vegas even I it up? Think, no. I don't remember. I fell asleep. No, Colorado I'm, won. I Vegas evened up that series. I don't know. I fell asleep before. I didn't see any uh, highlights or an update. I didn't get an update. Colorado up 2 nothing. I haven't seen an update since I went to sleep. I fell asleep uh, about 11 o'clock. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right, Lewis. I apologize. The Avalanche dropped two games to none. Yes, I thought Vegas evened it up. Nope, Colorado's up two games. Okay, yep. I I think Colorado's going to win that series in six. Yep. Well, they went back. They now they have four. They got to go now. Yeah. Instead of uh, Robin Lanier. Yeah. Lanier. Well, Um, before we go, you got any closing thoughts you'd like to have? Anybody have any? No good. Closing thoughts? No. Everybody good there. Uh, Want to uh, congratulate Elio Castroneves on winning his fourth Indy 500. I won it last. Darn it, man! I meant to cover that on here too, and I watched that the other day. Yeah, I I watched here, dude. I'm sorry. That's all my motor motorsport fans out there. It was it was an incredible race. Great action. How many? He's uh, won what? Five of them in his career. Four. This was his fourth. Fourth, fourth one. His fourth win. Yep, this is the fourth win. What a race it was! He won, got two, two to go, and he made the move and held him off. Mm-hmm. And Kyle, uh, congratulations to Rick uh, Hendrick Motorsports on their 269th win. Nice. Um, passing Richard Petty Motorsports for the most wins uh, by an organization in NASCAR history and stock car history. So congratulations to them. Um, they put they put on an absolute clinic the last month, and won just about everything. Mm-hmm. And they 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 swept the top four at Dover. Um, let me see. Yeah. Uh, the, then they won last week with. Uh, then they won last uh, two weeks ago. Oh yeah, I did. let me go to the app here. This should be easiest. So they should have all the results. I, I just think too, man, there's nothing cooler in, in motorsports than seeing someone drink milk after they win. So the yeah. Indianapolis five hundred is I'm, so cool and whoever wins to drink the milk. That's so cool. I'm not a I'm not a milk guy. Well, I mean, you know, and that's that kind of celebration is kind yeah. of different. They they've won the yeah. the last three races in a row. Okay. And four out of the uh, last seven. Um, Dover, Circuit of the Americas, and uh, Charlotte. Sonoma is this week. 
Okay. Over out in California. I don't know if they're going to have fans or not. I haven't heard. And then All-Star Weekend is the weekend after next. And then Nashville comes back to the schedule for the first time in 30-odd years. Wow. Okay. And that's right. your Motorsports Minute. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So. All right. Well, guys, as we always say, man, this has been the Warp Report, and we are part of In The Zone Sports Talk Radio. If you want to get some um, In The Zone Sports Radio gear, head over to spotlocker.com, type in In The Zone Sports Talk Radio uh, to get your gear. They have hats and shirts and all the exclusive stuff there at squadlocker.com. So please go over there and check that out. Uh, the show, guys, is sponsored by CreatingZenSpaces.com. Again, the local choice in St. Petersburg, Florida. For house cleaning, organization, decluttering, and pet sitting, it's about finding peace within you, adding comfort to your life. And remember, Zen Spaces begins with you guys. Be kind to yourself and one another. And if you want to watch this show in its entirety and you missed any of it, you head over to the YouTube channel, the Sports Show Bradley Walker. It will be up there momentarily, probably right after this show. I'll have it up. Um, anyway, guys, you guys want to go ahead and plug your shows for this weekend? Go right ahead. The floor is yours. If I can manage to wake up before 10 o'clock, there will be an unscripted this Saturday, 10 to noon, on my YouTube channel at Adam Mangold, uh, where I will be the least humble host on your sports radio dial. Um, talking all sports, just going to wing it like I always do. Um, NFL, NHL, we'll probably talk about the Shifley incident again and discuss whether the uh, cri- the punishment fitted the cr- fit the crime. Mm-hmm. Um, the usual suspects, it's unfiltered, uncensored, and it's adults only. So if you're an adult or your mom lets you uh, say the bad letter words, so come on by, hang out, tell your friends, tell your enemies, tell people you don't know, like, comment, and subscribe. Yep. Lewis? All right. Uh, if you guys are awake on, on the afternoon on Saturday, 5 to 7 p.m., uh, tune to the Enhanced Sports Show. Uh, we've got a ton of stuff to talk about this week. we got round two of the NHL and NBA playoffs. Uh, we'll tackle the uh, NASCAR and the Indy 500 as well. Uh, we'll also cover the return of the XFL. I mean, the USFL, no joke. We are doing that. Oh, boy. Uh, UFC will be on the list. Uh, we'll, we'll, cover, uh, the, uh, we'll cover the first part of the uh, French Open. Uh, the Belmont, so if you have any predictions on that, love to hear it. I think a horse is going to win. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the horse. <laughs> take the horse, of course. The horse, of course. A horse, a horse. My kingdom for a horse. Yes, the horse, of course, of course, of course. And I'll have our usual features of uh, this week in sports history. Was well, sports trivia with Diane. Um, that's my significant other, by the way. Um, we'll also have the um, the liar side of sports. We take on an issue that. You know, away from all the heavy stuff, from all, all the people that um, you know get in all kinds of trouble, we try to take away from that, and bring on the positive side of that. So, you know, that's that's what that subject is about. And the ridiculous side of the week, because I got a good one this week. Oh boy, I got a good one for the ridiculous side. So, if you wish to call, uh, call the following number: five one two five four three four six six two. That number again: five one two. Five four three four six six two. I will try to keep a I will try to keep a straight face through the entire show. Although that may be difficult to do. Don't let micro. Yeah, at least you're not on camera for that show. I am. Nobody else is though. All right. Well, guys, I have the Sunshine State Sports Show for tomorrow, nine p.m. Eastern Standard right. Time. Uh, that is part of NGSC. I'll be over there talking about all four sports. I'm sure that these two gentlemen, or one or two of them, both will be on. With me tomorrow. Yeah, I may or may not be on tomorrow night. It depends yeah. on what's going on. Yeah, if you give guys you know. that will be fine. If not, I understand. Uh, but, but as I always do, I want to thank the uh, doctors, nurses, first responders, uh, true heroes that have been going on. Now the pandemic is starting to kind of wind down a little bit, uh, but they were the true heroes last year and are still fighting the virus every day, having to go to work and do what they do. Uh, to the men and women of our armed services, we just celebrated Memorial Day. Uh, thank you guys for what you do, because that's honestly, we wouldn't be able to do what we do without you guys sacrificing um, your basically your lives for us to keep our freedom free. That's awesome. Uh, to the police officers, firefighters and paramedics. Thank you as well. 
guys, these two gentlemen and myself will be back here next Thursday uh, for the walk report. Uh, as we do, I'll be on my show. These gentlemen both have shows on Saturday. Please go over there and, and watch and take part of their shows because they're both awesome. You know, both my co-hosts have awesome shows uh, on Peter Saturday. King. So go over there and do that. But anyway, guys, until next week, everyone stay safe. Have a good weekend, guys. Tomorrow's Friday. Thank God uh, we've got to the end of the week. But anyway, until then, guys, this has been the Sports Star Brad Walker. Peace. Good night. Good night and good luck. <laughs>